Outside Houston's newest Walmart, on one of the busiest shopping days of the year, a blunt message to eager customers. We are calling for consumers to be aware of the high price that people that work at Walmart are paying. Walmart associates, according to these protesters and thousands of others across the country, including these folks in Maryland, are underpaid, lack decent health care, and can't unionize. And they say that's not just bad for Walmart employees, it's bad for everyone. When you have set the standard that low, the other retail jobs you're going to look for are going to have followed Walmart's suit. Of note, nobody in this Houston picket line is actually a Walmart employee. A passerby noted that fact. I don't know anything about their wages. I just questioned why there were no Walmart employees standing with you. With police hovering in the background to prevent trespassing, holiday shopping in this corner of the Heights hardly came to a standstill Friday. We flagged down a few customers. With all the prices, everything going up in cost, in the holiday season, even worse. Not being paid a proper wage. That's With that said, you've got two Walmart bags in the back of your car. I didn't even know about this. Would it keep you from shopping at Walmart? Uh, no. It'd be nice to have a job at Walmart, though. Thanksgiving is over, the shopping is done, and now the bags are packed. And just like millions around the country, it's time to go home. Next in line. Whether you travel by plane or by car, you won't be alone. Triple A Texas estimates more than 3 million Texans hit the highways just in time, though, for lower gas prices. The state average sits at $3.16. But for those who choose to fly this holiday, well, they paid more for a ticket this year than last. Where are you going today, ma'am? And they are ready for a busy day. I was so glad to get home. <laughs> now, she's been gone a week and ready to get back into a routine, but the busiest travel day wasn't too troublesome. It wasn't crowded like I was expecting and difficult to get check bags and it was it was actually very easy. It's the peak travel season at Bush Airport. More than 106,000 passengers will travel through the big airport. And for Hobby, there are 344 flights today. The busiest travel day for Hobby. But so far, it's smooth sailing at both airports. I was surprised at how easy it was to get in and pick her up. Going out was a different story, though. If there's a bright spot about traveling on this busiest day, well, at least here, the weather conditions are perfect. In Southwest Houston, Courtney Savala, KPRC, Local 2. Hey there. I want you to take a look at something real quickly. It's this. Looks like some old broken PVC pipe, right? Oh, no. This is more than that. And where I'm standing just hours ago was a crime scene. Not exactly a plum assignment for the officers stuck investigating these metal theft capers overnight. To their credit, Shenandoah police officers did get the water shut off. In the early hours of this morning, that's when our officers first came across uh, the first backflow preventer. Backflow preventers keep water from running up the pipe the wrong way. What's important to the crooks is that these fittings are made out of brass. Scrap, they're worth maybe 20, 25 bucks. This whole night of destruction probably earned the unknown thieves less than a C note. The expense that they cause these businesses and business owners is, is far greater than the little bit of money that they'll collect. So not exactly crime of the century, but these guys could be in some hot water once they're rounded up, including theft and destruction of property charges. In Shenandoah, Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC Local 2. It is the largest sheriff's office in Texas, third largest in the U.S. Four million residents and 4,000 employees look to the Harris County Sheriff to keep things running smoothly. you got to remember, I walked into an organization uh, in, in which I, not only did I inherit a $56 million budget deficit, but I also inherited a culture that uh, lacked the uh, transparency and a culture that lacked accountability. One-term incumbent Sheriff Adrian Garcia is a former HPD officer and Houston City Council member. He says he's made the department more accessible, more professional, and no longer a drain of taxpayer dollars. His opponent, Lewis Guthrie, isn't impressed and points to his work experience, which he says makes him better qualified. Well, I've been in law enforcement for over 21 years. Uh, I have a degree in criminal justice administration. 
I've been a commander in two different organizations, uh, including the Harris County Sheriff's Office. Guthrie says Garcia hasn't focused on the things that matter. He points to recent trouble at the jail, staff, morale, and a crime rate the two candidates don't seem to agree on. We've kept a lid on crime. We've uh, driven down uh, rapes and murders. Under the current sheriff, Harris County violent crime has risen almost 30 percent. Garcia contends he's worked hard to put more deputies on the streets during an era of cost cutting. At the core, these men have different ideas and different philosophies. Guthrie is a Republican, Garcia is a Democrat. Each man sees the other as lacking essential skills to do the job. It's a lack of experience, I think it's a lack of direction, and it's a lack of vision for the department. I think when uh, Mr. Guthrie compares our records, I'm going to be happy to receive his, uh, his vote. I want to show you something. That is the AR-15 right there. No doubt it is a controversial gun, but at this point it is also so popular that gun stores can't keep them in stock. It is a formidable weapon, rapid firepower, dictated only by the quickness of your trigger finger. Magazine capacity has very little to do with my ability to wreak some havoc with this. In fact, an AR-15 in the wrong hands has wreaked havoc. The tragedies in Connecticut and Colorado are fresh examples. This piece doesn't aim to take up the debate over the controversial weapon, other than to point out sales in the Houston area have been brisk. What's causing the rush right now is because now the people in the White House and in the government are, are talking about a ban. In fact, demand is so high for the AR-15 and other guns right now, Memorial Shooting Center's recent newsletter alerts customers to a new policy. Due to extremely high demand for AR-15s and handguns, we are unable to take deposits. All firearms will be sold on a first-come, first-served basis. The demand is nationwide. Three came in here Friday afternoon. They were sold within minutes. The AR-15 is completely legal to possess in Texas, and there is no limitation on magazine capacity. In this configuration right here, this gun would run about $2,000 if you can get your hands on one. In West Houston, Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Local 2. I can't be around fireworks. The smell of diesel, that'll bring me back to where I was in Iraq. You're just ready to just jump at any moment. Zach Alexander served in Iraq. He's been home for a couple of years. It was only last year he hit bottom in a meth house, and he called the PTSD Foundation for help. My daily routine was to get up and, and look out the blinds, but never open them, look out the blinds, just to more or less check my perimeter. Ray Wodinski served in Vietnam. He sought treatment at the Houston VA Hospital for PTSD 16 years ago. I had a friend who was concerned and, and took me up to uh, the vet center. Zach spent four months living in the PTSD Foundation's Camp Hope. It's interim housing and counseling for PTSD war veterans. Both are fathers with failed marriages and had difficulty holding down a steady job, but they're slowly recovering. Karen Thompson, head of the PTSD clinic at Houston's VA hospital, explains PTSD is real for war veterans and civilians, too. Something that can happen to people who are in a car accident or a natural disaster or have an assault, so it's not limited to the military. So what about what happened in Erath County? The executive director for Camp Hope says don't just pin it on PTSD. Some other psychological factors could have been an issue. The PTSD causes them to say, I am hopeless and I don't deserve to live. And that's why we have 22 suicides a day, not 22 mass murders a day. Here at Wings and More, it's one of the only places you can get deep fried Twinkies, but that may not last long. That's because Hostess is shutting down. It's a true Texas treat, deep fried Twinkies. Employees here at Wings and More order two to three dozen every month for their sweet loving customers. It's sad because there are just so many people that's going to be losing their job. And that is, it's, right now is not the time for that. Whenever you're hungry and you, you can't find nothing to eat, you got to eat a Twinkie or something or a Zinger. But, uh, it's going to be sad to see them go. Our Facebook fans have also been commenting. Joe Chandler writes, can't say I've had one of their products in a while, but never thought they would be bankrupt. Another American institution vanishing. Brenda Floyd Burdick says, a part of my childhood is gone. It was a very exciting day when we had the occasional Twinkie or Ding Dong in our lunch. Say, Alakazam, Presto, and what do we have? Ha, ha, hostess Twinkies. 
Hostess was founded in 1930 and makes everything from Twinkies, snowballs, cupcakes to Wonder Bread. Now, the company was not only facing labor costs, but also growing competition in the snack industry, as well as Americans growing increasingly conscious of eating healthy. Reporting in Houston, I'm Mary Lee for KPRC Local 2. When this baby goes off, <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know that I mean business. Last February, he struck us as an interesting character, a neighborhood folk hero of sorts. My dancing partner and I are very close. Raiku Malartin was gracious and inviting as he recounted the story of how he stopped a robber who targeted an elderly woman in his neighborhood. This time around, we found it harder to get a hold of Malartin, a man now charged with sexually assaulting a child. A 16-year-old female employee at his Crosby car dealership who told investigators she was paid for sex. We also knocked on another door today and no luck at George Catani's last known address. He's also a dealership employee and he's charged with fondling that very same teen. What we did get today was a warning from Harris County Sheriff's investigators that there may be other young victims. It's important that the word gets out to the public that if there are any other incidences involving these two people that we certainly want to encourage them to call the police and to let us know. Court documents reveal disturbing and graphic allegations against Malartin and Katani. The question now from deputies is have these men had illegal encounters with other minors? Just what if the Lone Star State seceded from the Union? Well, it would mean one less star on the United States flag, but just how realistic is it? We spoke to a Rice University professor to find out. Fun for parlor conversations to talk about what if Texas became its own country. Let's talk about what if. What if we seceded from the Union? What could happen? Well, first, it's not going to happen, but if it did, it would probably create a lot of chaos and a lot of problems for Texas. Uh, we're so intertwined with the rest of the nation in terms of commerce, trade, uh, probably have a negative impact on the Texas economy. So let's pretend this cup is a rain gauge and the water, government support. But if you take away government funding and you take away the military, like Border Patrol, you're not left with much. I'm definitely born and raised Texan, so I love Texas, but I think um, American pride is something that's also pretty well-rooted. Texas is just always extreme. This is another extreme moment for Texas. Of like Texas on its own, away from like the federal government's like regulations is kind of frightening. It's terrifying, actually. Well, I guess I would just stay here. I mean, I don't have no problem with it. But even Governor Perry dismisses the issue. He says he doesn't think Texas should secede the union. Reporting in the Weather Garden, I'm Mary Lee for KPRC Local 2.